Hey everybody, um, just welcome to Mimosas in the Morning. We're a little early, a couple minutes. We got a lot of stuff we're gonna go over um, and do. So I just pinned, um, if you guys can copy that or take that, um, I'll go over what that is in a little bit once we get some people on. So um, we're gonna sit up and get ready, thanks. Alrighty. It's not working. Sorry, y'all. Gonna try and get us so we can comment to get on here. If you're just watching this now or tuning in, it's Mimosas in the Morning. We're doing a special um, episode this week, and I will fill you in on what that is in a sec. Now, here we go. Get us so you can comment to get on here. Alright, let's mute myself and adjust the camera. All right, so. Cool. Um, let me give it a minute, let some people get on here. Since we're early, if you're tuning on the Instagram IGTV, and you can fast forward this beginning part here for a moment, take a couple minutes and let people get uh, on for our live. Again, cheers. Uh, welcome to Mimosas in the Morning. If you don't know me, my name is Josh Greenwood. Um, uh, we've been doing this show for about, I think this is our sixth or seventh week. Something like that. I think so. Maybe. Um, and today's episode, we're not having a special guest on. Uh, next week, we have a very special guest. Um, it's one of my friends, Darnell Mitchell. Um, uh, wonderful, uh, wonderful man, very nice. Um, and we'll talk about more at the end of our show for what's going to be happening next week with him. Um, this week, um, we're, we're doing something a little different, a little special. It's going to be very open form this week. Um, again, people can request to actually be on the show on live. Um, we can take questions, um, comments. The theme of this week and what we're going to talk about is we're going to talk about um, the protests and everything that are going on. It's important. It's something that we shouldn't stay quiet on. We talked about it last week with Jason Vasquez, who was our guest. This week, um, I'm taking a little more of a hands-on approach. Approach. Uh, we talked about you know things you could do to keep yourself safe and protected um, uh, if you're out there protesting uh, and exercising you know your American rights to make sure that we are a just and accountable nation. Um, I, this week, we're going to actually talk about two of the things I did last week. We're actually going to do hands-on. We're going to, we're going to actually physically make, I'm going to walk you through step-by-step, step, um, in creating, uh, a gas mask and some actual homemade body armor, um, for you guys that are coming to know me and maybe have started just recently following me. Um, I have, uh, what I do professionally is teach self-defense. I'm a self-defense um, and fighting instructor, uh, coach for MMA, Krav Maga, um, Jiu Jitsu, Muay Thai, a lot of striking arts, a lot of weapons training as well. I do train and teach um, uh, de-escalation and uh, non-violent compliance training for uh, law enforcement military as well and how to be as peaceful as possible in any situation to um, keep people on both sides, everybody safe. Um, from my perspective and watching videos of um, the rights that are going on, there's a lot of unlawful and very unjust and very bad things that are going on um, to protesters um, from my point of view and what I've seen. Um, I 
want to preface and start today's show uh, before doing anything. Um, I shared a link in here, I got this from my wife, um, uh, and it's a Google Doc. It has a lot of information on how to be an ally, how to learn um, to um, combat racism, how to be an ally, how to understand white privilege and what that is, what defunding the police actually means. Um, it is, I pinned it in there. I don't know if you can actually touch through on it or you can just copy and paste it and take it. Um, it's being shared and making the rounds on a lot of social media. Um, it's a lot of information that's been gathered by um, African-American and black activists from Black Lives Matter to many other organizations and people out there, the ACLU, different authors. It has books, it has media, it has movies, it has articles, it has uh, many things that you can check on and read, links to it and things that can um, help you educate yourself more and help you educate others, um, whether that be family members or friends or um, anybody that maybe shares an unfavorable viewpoint of what's going on. Um, it's, it's, it's hard to see. It's very um, heartbreaking and sad. And this isn't something that has that is new. It's not new. Um, African Americans and Black Americans have been dealing with this for since the inception of the United States. You know, it's something that is um, tragic and not right, and it is something that is. Um, it, it's just it's heartbreaking to see, um, especially having a, a president, commander in chief who is you know, intentionally trying to divide the country. Um, it's very, very rough. Um, so I want to throw out a couple different names. We're going to put these on here. I'm going to put the links um, to these women and um, uh, people that you can check out if you want to gain more information or be um, learn how to be a better advocate before we get into our, our hands-on today. So, so the first, uh, Rachel uh, Cargill. And I'm gonna put her website up on here as we go through. Um, some of these, my, my wife has definitely helped me um, stay abreast of understanding and learning who these different activists or um, black women and black men, um, authors, um, uh, you know, artists, individuals that have started um, trends and or are advocating and um, giving information out to help. Um, so this is, I'm gonna put up a couple here. Um, next one, I'm gonna put up Brittany Packnett Cunningham. And here. Um, so a little bit, I'm gonna read just straight from their bios um, as we go in here, Rachel Cargill. Um, she's an academic writer and lecturer. lecturer. Um, uh, she provides a lot of intellectual discourse tools and resources um, that explore the intersection of race and womanhood. Um, uh, you can check her out on our social media platforms. There's links on the webpage that I just shared. Um, and Brittany Packnett Cunningham is also an activist, educator, and writer. Um, uh, she, I believe, her social media is at Miss Pack Um uh, She does a lot of social change and empowerment. Um, she is uh, MS, NBC and NBC News contributor and a fellow at the Harvard Institute of Politics, uh, exploring social change and intersectional activism. Um, uh, she does uh, is on the Pod Save the People. I believe that is her. She's a co-host of the 2019 iHeartRadio Best Political Podcast, Pod Save the People. There's a few people that uh, I know personally that love that podcast. My wife um, and my sister-in-law, uh, in, in particular. Um, and there's another Instagram page it's called The Great Unlearn. I found this from my wife. She actually is very in tune and on top of what's going on and very connected to um, everything. Um, which is good and bad. It's heartbreaking at the same time to always have to be searching and want to, but at the same time, it's great to have the be in the know um, and be educating and helping other people go out. Um, so the great unlearn, um, uh, it's at the great unlearn on Instagram. Um, this great page has a lot of links and information on how to, you know, deal with white fragility, deal with racism, deal with learning how to become an ally um, and learning what a lot of what you're seeing on TV um, and these news and media sources 
um, can help you with. This is actually um, curated by Rachel, Car Rachel Cargill, um, the first website we put up on there, that's rachelcargill.com. Um, so again, let me just fix my web page here. Awesome. Um, so for me, again, going back to um, trying to be an ally and trying to support what's going on, I am, again, a self-defense instructor. Um, I have been struggling to try and find where my skills and talents and things I understand and know lie, the things I don't know, um, and how to be a support to the cause and how to be a support to people that are out there in a lot of these major cities and all over the country and the world in all 50 states and I think 18 other countries um, to stay safe in the face of, um, of violence and danger from the people who are supposed to keep you keep you safe. Um, so um, we're gonna start and go through um, a couple different projects. It's gonna take us some time if anybody pops on. Um, you can question, comment um, up in here. You can request to go live with if you have anything um, that would be pertinent or would like to, to ask me about. Um, another thing that you can do is if you have any good resources, any, any web pages, um, any Instagram, um, uh, anybody on Instagram, Facebook, any of our social media platforms, Twitter, um, to follow or to want to share with everybody, please throw it in the comments here. Um, and let it go. Again, I pinned a comment, it's a Google Doc that has a lot of information um, that has been compiled by um, uh, these two women and that is full of information that is from um, black activists, uh, Black Lives Matter, ACLU, uh, many different books, um, uh, media sources, social media articles, movies, documentaries that you can learn um, from to be better. So. I'm going to go into our two uh, projects for today um, that are going to help, and I'm going to talk to you why. Again, I'm with these projects and the things I'm teaching you, we're not advocating violence in any way. Um, what we're advocating for is for peaceful protests and to stay safe during that. There's been too many um, people being injured, brain damage. Um, you know, we're going through a pandemic with COVID, which is affecting the respiratory and the circulatory system, and people are getting tear gassed. Um, paintball pepper balled, um, you're getting um, a lot of things that affect your mucous membranes as well in, in your sinuses, your mouth. Uh, it burns, it affects your respiratory um, system and causes respiratory distress. Um, there was just an individual I just read about this morning um, and she has asthma. She actually got tear gas and pepper sprayed. Um, and I believe uh, uh, I wouldn't quote me wholeheartedly on this. As she was in Ohio, um, pretty positive it was Ohio, and uh, she died at the hospital from respiratory complications from her asthma being triggered by the um, effect of the tear gas and the pepper spray. Um, it's not, it's serious stuff. It's, it's very debilitating, it hurts, it burns, you can't breathe, you freak out, you panic. When you start panicking, you start to breathe faster, and now you're hyperventilating and getting more of it into your system. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a, um, hey Sean, we're going to create a, um, a homemade gas mask. So the first thing you can do, and now I'm talking about multiple different levels of this. So we're going to cut through, we're going to get it in. First thing you're going to need is a jar, um, preferably bigger than this. A full gallon would be nice. Um, something large. Um, if you had a bleach container or something else, uh, I would definitely rinse or go out, this is white vinegar. It took me a day to um, just get most of the white vinegar smell out of it so you're not inhaling and breathing that as you're trying to uh, not get gassed. Um, so things that we're gonna need, you're gonna need a jug, clear packing tape, um, option that we do or don't need it. This is, and I'll show you what it is. It's foam window seal or insulator the foam window insulator. Um, I just got a smaller, thinner strip of it. You can get window proofing or um, uh, weather stripping. Um, you want the sticky side, so you can be able to stick it to what you're making. Um, 
you can get larger, thicker. There's all sorts of stuff you can use. If you don't, you can also just tear out um, strips that come with your AC. I know in New York, everyone has the in-window AC units if you if you have one, because um, there's no central air anywhere. So you can take that weather stripping, that foam that comes with it um, as an optional section that can kind of go in. Um, these are the three things you need and a sponge and knife, right? Or scissors, something that can because we're going to need to cut into this. So we're going to go through this step by step um, and we are going to talk about how to create a gas mask and why it's important and the th most important aspects of it, right? So the first thing you're going to do, we're going to turn it upside down because this is going to be the, um, uh, the bottom portion of it, right? Now when we get into this, let me pull this back up. Oh. Sorry, y'all, I got to something I'm going to share with everybody here in a moment. I'm going to pull this up. One, two. Um, no. All right. So. All right. So first thing we're going to do, right, in here, we're going to cut two triangles. Right, the two triangles are gonna be on either side. So we're gonna look at the handle, or if you have a jug that doesn't have a handle on it, that's fine, you're gonna pick one side to go through. And the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna cut two triangles, right, that are gonna intersect towards the front, right? So it's gonna start low, and it's gonna intersect up and forward and high. So I'm gonna show you as we cut through and go in here. while you're doing this because it would not be uh, beneficial or helpful for you to become injured while you're doing this and generally cut away from your body. Right? So again, here's one of the triangles is what it looks like on the side. We're going to do the same thing on the opposite side. So I've got one side and I'm going to cover and do the other side. Now there are a lot of good resources out for this. You can find diagrams, you can find um, different um, resources online um, and books. Um, one I recommend, um, if you're looking for personal safety um, and that has quick and easy guides for the things that we're creating right now. Um, uh, Clint Emerson wrote a book, he's a former Navy SEAL. It's called um, uh, 100 Deadly Skills and um, it's very informative, has a lot of stuff. This is a design that's similar to the one that he's going in. We're doing a mixture of two different designs. Um, so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna cut the bottom of the strip we created, right? So we have this. So it looks like there's a flap on the top end here. Now the flap can be adjusted for size. You wanna take off some of the edges in which it could cut you. Um, and we're gonna go back into this. So I'm gonna show you one design and then we're gonna go back into the secondary design after this, right? So these pieces we don't need anymore, let's set them to the side. So what we're gonna do, excuse me here. So this is a little flap that's on the back. So one design, the first design is the very, very simple. All we're gonna need is one, two, and three. So this is the non-weather stripping design as we go in, right? So when we're doing this, hey Kathy, yeah, hey Sean and Ben, right? So this is the first design. So we've cut two triangles, I'm gonna hold this up close on either side. These aren't really, you'll have time to like really make sure that what you're doing is is super precise. Um, we're doing this fast and kind of giving you the idea of what we're doing. So this is one, so I have the handle. I have a huge head. I should probably get a bigger bottle, but I was just trying to use what I had on hand at home. So we're gonna make it, so this flap actually will sit on the back of your head and it can hold on and start to keep this connected as you go in, right? So this is how it's gonna kind of sit on your face. So I can still breathe, I can go through. Um, this design here, you are going to basically tape this entire thing to your head. <laughs> this is not a quick, I can have it on and take it off design, right? So 
with the flap. I'm gonna I'm gonna keep this on for now, and we're gonna go back and we'll take this off for the secondary design, the one that's a little little more um, appropriate for what we're talking about, right? So, again, for those that are just joining us, welcome again. Most is in the morning. Um, Kathy, Sean, Ben, Elise. Today we're talking about. Um, I've got a pin in here. There's a Google Doc. There's a uh, plethora, tons of information on how to be an ally, how to deal with white fragility, how to understand intersectional um, racism and where things are all connected through. Um, again, that link in the Google Doc there. I've shared a couple of websites for some um, incredibly smart African-American women um, and their Instagram pages to get information and stuff on. For us today, last week, we talked about dealing with how, how to stay safe. Um, if you're protesting and doing stuff, two of the main causes of injury um, right now that are happening are obviously exposure to pepper spray and tear gas. And the second one is being shot by rubber bullets or beanbag rounds or non-lethal or sub-lethal rounds. Um, still very painful, can, you know, especially if you're getting hit in the head, can cause trauma, lose eyes, teeth, mouth, nose, head, not good. So right now we're dealing with tear gas and pepper spray. So we're building a homemade gas mask. Right? So again, we're leaving this little flap on. You can cut the flap down so it fits to your head a little better. So it's just a little bit of a, a hook and nozzle. So it'll sit on like that on your head. Um, you're going to, with this type, you're basically taping the entire edged process, edge pieces to your head. This is gonna stick on, right? So next thing we're gonna do, we're gonna have to cut a section out so you can see, right? So when I'm cutting this section out, you wanna stay pretty centered and I need to be, needs to be visible. I need to be able to see my surroundings with some peripheral vision. Now, the thing with this is, you gotta make sure that when you're cutting it out, um, keep it as rectangular as possible, right? We don't wanna create um, weird angles. You wanna have a, a good view um, of your surroundings, obviously. Now, it's important that when we're doing this, that we're, when we are keeping it rectangular, because we're gonna tape over this with a clear tape in a moment, um, that way we can have a, a window for us to see, because obviously if we leave gaps and holes, then this doesn't do us any favors. It doesn't help us, it doesn't do anything good. So again, I've just cut out my where I can see from, right? So I can see enough in here that it's gonna keep me okay, right? This is a sloppy job, I could do better. Um, but it's not really about right now. We're just learning, teaching people how to do this. Um, so again, I need to make this fit my face a little better. So I'm gonna shear down a little bit on this right side. Remember, there can be sharp edges, so make sure to just cut everything down so it's efficient, right? So again, try to get a gallon jug, milk jugs, um, water bottle jugs, anything like that, you're good. You use sponge that you can cut up, clear packing tape, and if you want to get the fancy, which is the second kind we're going to do, you're going to need weather stripping that is a sticky side and not um, that will work on this. So we're doing the non-weather stripping side first. So next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to take my clear packing tape and I'm going to cover like I'm laminating my, um, my mask, right? So I'm doing a double-sided here, so it goes on the inside and the outside. And we wanna make sure there are no gaps. So when you're covering this, if there are any gaps, then pepper spray and tear gas can get in. We don't want that. It's like when you were a kid in school um, and they wanted you to laminate stuff, or at least in the military, we did this a lot. You don't actually have, go have a laminating machine um, and you're laminating stuff. You are, um, you just have to use clear tape. So it's enough that you can see, try and clear out air bubbles. Don't let it be um, messy because you want to be able to see everything. If you can't see stuff, it's going to affect your vision um, and it's going to affect your ability to move um, fast and get away if you need to, right? Again, once you get out of a situation, we're always advocating first thing you do is run away. If, if there's like serious violent action happening and you're not prepared to um, deal with it, create distance and space. These are not professional grade you know, gas masks uh, or NBC masks um, or gear. So what you want to do is get the air bubbles out. And now what I've created here is a clear face shield. So if you get sprayed with this, um, it's going to keep it out of your eyes. It's going to keep um, 
uh, gas and any particulates because what it is is a really fine powdered mist that you inhale and breathe or gets into your eyes and mucous membranes and starts to burn. Um, like OC, oxazium, capsizium. Um, uh, it's, it's not fun to get into that. So it really deals with the mucous membranes. Also, anywhere you have pores. Again, when you get done, take cold shower, rinse it off. It's going to reactivate if you take hot. Um, it's not going to feel good and you're going to want to make sure and get it all off your, off your body and skin. So first thing we've done right now, right? Look, I've created a mask in which I can generally see, right? I've created a barrier that goes around my face, right? And I want to cover as much of that up as I can. Um, so again, I have a big old chunk here that I need to shear off. Perfect. So again, scissors work really well, knife, cut it so it's, um, smooth and edging. So this is one option. Now this option here, you're basically done. All you're going to do from this option, if I were in a very rushed, we've done this in what, 20 minutes and I'm talking the whole time we're doing it. If you do this in a situation where you're like, Hey, I need to do something now. You're, um, you know, this could also be used in, in you're in another country and civil unrest happens. You need to escape and or get out. You know, this is you can, if you have time to prep this, you can do the nicer version, which we're going to do in a second. Um, for this version, because you need to secure and seal the sections around your face, um, it's important that you use the tape to cover any gap in existing hole. Now, this does not come off. When you are, you can't just pop this on and off as you are, um, as you feel, right? So once this is on, what you're going to do is you're going to take the tape. You're gonna tape it around your head and you're gonna tape the edges down the side to your skin, right? So again, that's you're gonna tape the edges all the way down so it connects to the skin on the side. You're creating an airtight seal or as airtight as possible. Um, having a beard or other facial hair makes it harder to have that seal um, and difficult um, to keep all particulates out. So again, Option one, last resort, very fast. Um, something if you want to make something that's like you're going to take with you and do. Um, so we're going to go to option two. So it's basically the same thing. We're just going to continue um, making this a little more airtight and a little better. So this is where the, we're done with the tape. Now this is where the weather stripping is going to come into handy. So now I don't need this little strip on the top because what we're going to do with this one, we're going to create um, tie downs that you can actually attach to your head. So what I'm going to do here is... I'm going to cut off this top portion because we don't need it anymore. So now what I've done is I've gotten rid of the top portion here. I've taken that away. So now I really just have like, it's like a mask, it's face cage here. Now this is going to fit a little tighter and seal better on your head, which is, which is good, which is what you want. Um, so I'm going to just cut off some edges here so I don't cut my face up while I'm doing this. Um, this is where the weather stripping comes in. I'm not going to weather strip this whole thing. This is going to take too long. Um, and we don't want to do that for the show because the second portion is going to be very important as well. But I'm going to show you how we're going to do this piece by piece so you can continue to do this. If you have weather stripping and we're talking about this portion, um, pull this off here. Weather stripping has a sticky side and a non sticky side. So, what I'm going to do here is let's just cut this whole thing. Perfect. Um, very, very sticky. So, what I'm going to do right here is I'm going to just take a section of this. I'm going to cut it. Now, the sticky side, I'm going to expose it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to place this all along the edge as circular and or center as possible. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stick it to it. You know? So if you get a, a larger, like a thicker one, it'll probably work a little better. I was just going for time saving um, options here. It'll, it'll have more surface area to stick to it, which is good. So what you're creating here is a barrier and a seal along the edge. So when this is on, one, you have a soft edge when it's not going to cut you. If you want to wear it for an extended period of time, this is going to actually, this seal that's happening is going to protect your face 
and protect um, uh, any gaps that would have been left behind previously so that you're not getting gassed. So you're not getting any tear gas or pepper spray things leaking through these little gaps and sections here. So what you're gonna do is continue to seal this all the way around, right? All the way around. Now the last portion, the final portion. So we sealed this up all the way around, right? We need to fill the gap, right? So I need to be able to breathe, obviously. Um, so in the gap here, we have to have some sort of filtration system, which you can't just buy a filtration system and screw it on here. Um, if you were doing that, it'd be better just to buy a market, off-market gas mask. So two things you can do. We can take a 3M mask or any sort of like hospital mask of stuff we're wearing for COVID that's a little um, higher grade than just regular cloth. And you can take it, we can cut it into a circle and we can place it on the inside and you can glue it to this open area here. Right, so you're creating a filter that comes through and then you would just plug this extra hole if you have this. So shove some cloth in here, plug this, create a, um, a gap inside here that's actually a mask. So you'll cut the um, uh, elastics off the mask and make it in. Now, if you don't have a mask that are going in, that's fine. Honestly, you can use, what we're gonna do is you can use a sponge and what you'll do is you'll cut the sponge into a quarter. So I'm gonna take a quarter of this sponge what I would be doing is I'd be soaking it. I'd be getting it wet and give it a light ring. So you wanna have the water in there. I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna fold it, and you're gonna place it down into the bottom, right? So what you've done is taken the sponge, I'm gonna show you here, and you've plugged the gap. Not so tight that you can't get any oxygen through, but you wanna have enough that when it plugs it, you're taking a solid amount of space in there. Again, a sponge without the, um, like this is a dual side, it's got the scrubber side and the regular. Try to get one with just the regular side or whatever you have at home works. But again, you wanna fill the gap enough that you can still breathe through it. So I've already created a bit of a seal. I can feel that and breathe already. Um, so if you're doing this at home, again, and you're prepping doing this, cut the sponge, you have more Try and get a nice amount that covers the hole with wet. Try it out, breathe through it, see how much oxygen you're getting through that's coming in. So again, when we're making this and we're going through, the most two most important things. One, your airtight seal. The seal is so important. You wanna make sure that you're not creating any gaps or spaces in your, in your uh, you know, gas mask so that particulates um, from tear gas or from pepper spray or things are getting into it. So a nice tight seal is number one. That's the biggest thing that's the most important thing we're doing. Uh, on top of that, um, visibility is, is the next, right? This is not gonna protect you from getting shot in the face from a beanbag round or a rubber bullet. It's not going to. It's just not what this is made for. This is for um, uh, tear gas and making sure that you are protected and safe from uh, particulates in the air, right? Uh, if we're doing a full face shield and things to protect you from that, it would be, it'd be different and a lot more expensive and a longer process. We're doing something basic here. So again, we did two types. We did the flap in the original one, the OG one, which was this, right? The flap was on and you can put it over your head. The flap will keep it on your head and you tape the entire thing to your head. So you're not using this weather stripping in there to create the seal, right? We want to create the seal with the weather stripping in here. I'll take a picture of this, I'll finish this up later and put it up on my Instagram so you guys can see the full finished product um, as you go in. Again, piece of sponge, wet it, place it into the bottom, and you want to create a seal that prevents any of the extra tear gas and stuff going in. You can wear this, you can breathe, you don't wanna have so such a lack of oxygen that you can't breathe. So again, tight seal, visibility, and the accessibility to oxygen are all three important parts to get in here as you're doing this. Um, again, you can keep extra sponge and if you have a water bottle with you, if one becomes too nasty and contaminated and you can't breathe through it, pop it out, wet it, put a new one in and you're good. Now the last part is how do you keep it attached to your head? There are a lot of different ways to do it. Simplest, easiest way is you're going to just poke holes, a tiny hole, just a tiny, tiny hole. You can barely see it there on a high and a low section. You can even do a real low section down low. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna create a strap that goes from low to high, 
and a high to low and a high to high, right? So we're here. We're going to go low, high, low, high, and high, high, right? So uh, elastic bands are really good for this. If you don't have elastic band, a sh you can do shoelaces, uh, paracord or 550 cord. Um, um, is good. Are they're all good? Um, and when you have it in, you want to make sure it's a tight seal. So you can pull back over the head, and it can um, at this ridge that you have on the back of your head. You want it to go below and high. You want to have enough pressure that's pulling it under your head from the high, low, and side to side sections here. So again, if you're out there protesting, we're advocating for um, peace and nonviolence. Make sure you're safe. Um, if it comes to it, and you're in a position where you can't escape or run get away and you're being you know there's tear gas and or pepper spray or anything and we want everyone to stay safe protect your eyes protect your nose your mouth your circulatory and your respiratory system people especially if you have asthma or any um, pre-existing conditions it's always smart to be where you're at if you want to be on the front line and you're protesting uh, I have you back and fully support the um, the cause uh, but at the same time be be safe uh, and be safe in what you're doing. You can control your actions, but you can't control others' actions. You know, seeing two police officers in Buffalo shove a 75-year-old man to the ground and walk over him like he's nothing while he's bleeding out. Um, you know, there aren't people that have the same intention or good spirit heart all the time. There are many other police officers that I personally know that are sweet, kind-hearted, wonderful people that stand up for what's right. But again, that doesn't mean you're going to come across that person if you're protesting. So be safe again safe so first thing we've done today we talked about we built a gas mask second part is going to be a little more in depth um and uh it, not, not intense but in depth so we're building we're gonna put together some body armor so this is we're talking about protecting your internal organs the most important parts of your body right now right this this is it right now we're not doing anything with the neck or the face we're protecting something in the center mass which is the largest section of your body which you could get shot with a rubber bullet um beanbag rounds i've seen people get their ribs broken um sternums cracked um internal injuries uh, from organs um being uh, ruptured or bruised um so what we're going to do is we're going to create a uh body armor vest right um you can there's some of these vests that you can build um, in a short period of time. Uh, the one I'm showing you can stop low caliber rounds from an actual firearm, so bullets. Um, but again, this is if you're going out looking for that, you shouldn't be protesting or going out. This is this is purely for self-defense and safety in a, in a circumstance in which people that um, are a little more fragile and or frail or younger or older um, can protect your bodies while you're trying to make your voice be heard in a peaceful manner. So again, uh, welcome everyone else that's kind of popping in and out. So we're gonna go through, again, this is gonna be on my Instagram, IGTV, um, if you guys wanna come back and check in on it. Again, on the pin section and the pin portion down here, uh, we've got a Google Doc um, that has a lot of information um, about advocacy and how to be an ally, how to deal with white fragility and how to, um, unlearn or understand more or unlearn racism and understand more how to be a better um, support to our um, uh, African-American and people of color community. Um, so we um, are doing this to keep people safe when you're protesting um, and we're fighting for the rights and the equality of all. So again, second portion right here, you're gonna want a Hard book. So I've, I have a two here. I'm going to do one front and one back. I'm using my mother-in-law's Bible book stuff. Um, but because I'm not going to duct tape straight on these, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put these into a scissor sleeve from the enemy. Just so you need to say. So first thing, I've got one book that covers a majority of my section. You can do multiple books and stack them, right? Tape them all together. So you have a little bit of flexibility in here. Um, I'm doing this one larger just to make it easier as, as I build it and do it, right? So when we're here, I've got one. So you're gonna need duct tape, hardcover back books as one option, sub-range eight, building some body armor here. Um, hardcover back books. The, this is really, you could just do it with this. This is going to cover enough 
Again, these are all multiple different things that you can do. There's a, an easy, quick, very fast, um, uh, um, simple way to do this. I could take this book, and if you have a backpack that has a, um, a you know, a sleeve for a computer in it, I can take this and slide it back into that sleeve. And now in my bag, I've got a protective container that I can kind of go through and um, in here. I've used this, they sell actual body armor that you can slide into um, these special gaps that you have in bags and backpacks. Um, you can put that inside, you could use that. It's very simple to turn it around, cinch it up, and now you have body armor that covers. This is the simplest and most effective way to do it, right? I can have a couple of bottles of water in here. You can have, you don't want to carry anything violent. You don't want, you know, no weapons, no nothing in there. This is just here. So the book can be inside and now you have a layer of protection against um, beanbag bag rounds or anything being shot at you. Again, so that if this were happening in your situation where you need to escape, you can turn and run. Um, we're teaching, we're teaching um, stuff for protesters to stay safe, uh, range and eight, so we get out there. So you different survival tactics and whatnot. And um, so, again, we're gonna build one, assuming you don't have a backpack, right? That can be, if you're running away, protecting your back as you're running, or on your front, if you're marching forward towards um, and worried about imminent threat and or danger of people firing upon you. So again, 12, 39, 20 minutes. So I'm gonna place this just because I don't want to mess up my mother in laws cool book. You want duct tape, and I'm just gonna seal this in here real quick, right? One, I'm gonna roll this down, and two. So I've got my first, my base layer. Now what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna step this up a notch, and what we're gonna build, we can do it with or without the book. I've gotten, I have, these were in the backyard in the garage, so not used, found tiles. Um, so these are just, again, about four by four inch bathroom tiles. Everything's great. Ceramic. Um, a lot of people don't know ceramic. Um, uh, yeah, I feel you mentioned it. This is, this is important stuff. Ceramic plates. Um, a lot of what actually is used in our actual body armor um, are ceramics. Again, the uh, level of protection you're getting with these, you're, you're not going to be protected against large caliber rounds or anything like that. And we're not talking about that anyway. So what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to layer on these ceramic plates, right? So what I want to do is to create a very flat, secure platform for all these plates that are going in, right? You do this front and the back. Um, there are layering methods that in which you can use where I can put a strip down of tape face up, right? I'm gonna now place my plates with a tiny, tiny, tiny gap in between because I wanna have a little bit of flexibility as I move. And I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna come back over, and from here, I've just created a strip of ceramic plates, right? I've got a little bit of flexibility and mobility in here, but not, and again, if I'm not using the book and I'm just doing plates, now you have plated armor that can curve around your body and be protected, right? So again, we're just gonna do the same thing on the other side right now, and I wanna create one large platform of protective plates for my body. Again, this is not protecting you against crazy, um, you know, high caliber rounds and stuff. This is for, I'm worried about um, hit with bean bags and or um, rubber bullets and things into my body, protect your ribs and your um, sternum, internal organs from being uh, bruised, broken, um, injured in, in other forms. So again, this can also be done. You're traveling, you know, internationally and you're in a place that sees violent unrest and you need to, you're in a hotel and you need to escape because something is happening, you know, get some tape, take these, take some books out of the, the drawer. Normally there's a Bible in some place. Um, you can break into the bathroom and break some tiles off the walls um, and use whatever you need to to secure your, yeah, I'm on duct tape. 
your um, materials that you're going to need. So I've just created a single layer um, plate vest, right? So I, there's no securing this to the body yet. This is just purely, I've created the components that I'm going to need to protect myself. So I've done just one layer, right? You can do multiple layers. You can make the thickness different. I would do another strip here and another strip here of the duct tape to make everything kind of secure and in. Um, another thing you can do, you know, we'll, we'll just do a strip on either. We'll do the full thing. We'll make it the, the correct way, right? So one, two, doesn't need to be pretty. Three. So now I've got strong section for my body armor, right? So each individual piece of tile has the ability to fracture and release energy and disperse it before going into the book, which the book then will do the same thing and disperse more energy and disperse it and, and make it go out. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna attach this to my book page, right? So I'm gonna do a strip on top, a strip in the middle. And again, I want this to be tight and secure. You never have too much duct tape, right? So I've got one layer. I've got layer number two. half assed this a little bit, guys, so apologize for the messiness of it. And layer number three. Now, if you can't, this is maybe 10 pounds right now, 10 pounds-ish. Um, this is a layer here that you can wear on the front and sides here. So this is going to keep you safe. Um, this is going to keep the majority of your body. I'm 200 pounds, about 5'10", 5'9 uh, and a half, technically. Um, and this is can protect the front side of my body. I will do the same exact thing. I'm not gonna do it right now. I would do the same exact thing for the back. So you have one in the front, one in the back. Um, I'm gonna skip the tiles for the back because of time. But I'm gonna use the other book. We have two books the same exact size. It helps, makes it easy um, for me. Again, something that's good too is using multiple books with different stackable books so that you have flexibility in the body armor itself. Um, so, I'm gonna do a light tape, and I'm only putting this stuff on because I wanna make sure that I don't mess up my mother-in-law's really nice books that she may or may not know I'm using. <laughs> so, let's just cover this. I'm just using a little bit of a painter's rag to cover the top here so I can duct tape over it without messing up the book itself. So again, I've covered taping. There we go. I've just secured it for now. And here, so I've got the second side. I'm going to do the front and the back. I'm going to show you how to turn this into a vest itself. Again, when we go back, I've got a 511 tactical bag um, that I use when I go train my clients and do a lot of stuff. I could take this and just slip this directly in to the bag, right? So look what we've got here. I've got a protective plate in my backpack and my bag. So from here, my back is protected. If I were running away and getting shot from behind, right? Another thing that I always say is important, wearing a hat is not only good for, and a mask and glasses are not only good for protecting your identity when you're out. So another thing is if I pull my bill down real low, you'll see I've created a light barrier in between the back of my neck and um, anything from behind. So you're creating as much of a barrier to protect your body as possible. So get rid of the hat. So again, backpack, super simple. Um, it's something that you can wear all the time, but it's not going to, you know, be as easy to maneuver all the time. Something you want to just have on and wear. So that's what we're going to do now. We're going to make a strip of this so you can just wear it on your body and how it's going to wear. And you're going to want to do a jump test. So First thing I'm gonna do is to create a long strip that goes down the top to the bottom of this. I'm gonna hook it underneath the bottom. 
because I'm going to want to have a little bit of a grip. Again, this will come all the way back around. So I'm going to take the back portion, back piece, and I'm going to need to create enough space in this so that the back piece, I have enough to go over my shoulders. Now, this isn't going to be as good as I would like it to be, but um, it'll, it'll do the job. It'll work, right? So I'm going to come back down and around. Now what I'm going to do with this is I need to make sure that this sticky side is not fully exposed. I don't want it to stick. So what I want to happen is I need to cover this again with duct tape on both. So again, I'm coming underneath the bottom. I'm going to layer this duct tape so it sticks together. So you're creating a shoulder strap, right? You don't need all the extra cloth in here. I'm just doing that to protect the face. Again, I would do this with books and things that you don't necessarily need and or want. Or if you can find some racist manifesto that you want to destroy and use that to do it. Um, alrighty. So here again, one. Pulling this all the way down. Hooking it underneath, creating a little bit of a gap in a layer. Um, I'm not, I, you should be doing this and doing it on your body. If you have somebody else to help you, that works as well too. Um, but what I'm doing is just creating shoulder straps, right? And you want the duct tape to stick to itself. Good. So yeah, we just made now body armor that we can use. I'm gonna take these sticky sides, roll them together. Now we can make these and reinforce the straps as we go in, right? What I've just done is created front and back body armor. Now what you're going to need to do is, um, there we go. I'm going to take this, make a strip. This is hard with one person, but I'm going to pull it around and see if I can do it. It's that yoga helping me out with some flexibility here. Boom. So what I've just done now is I've strapped it around my body. I mean, just rip that side there. Yeah, whatever. Um, so into a place where it's secured front and back. This is enough to take low caliber rounds, definitely enough that if you were shot with um, rubber bullets or anything in here, that this about one, one and a half inch thick. You could also lattice work or layer the, the um, um, if you wanted to do it wider, do a three wide and then a two wide tiles across here. Um, so the impact pounds per square inch is really being redirected and going off. So again, when I'm, I have the body armor, I can protect myself from small caliber and different rounds that are non-lethal, sub-lethal. So we're talking about bean bags, um, the pepper spray, um, the, the pepper balls, um, rubber bullets, stuff like this. This as well, you wear a hoodie or you wear a jacket. I actually don't have a jacket in here to demo, um, but actually, no, here we go. This is a little small. No, I won't use that one. Uh, anyway, you take it, put a jacket on, boom, zip it up, have a hoodie on, now you have protective armor. Again, you can make this stronger by reinforcing the straps on the shoulders. It should be strong enough that, that if you do the jump test, moving around, it doesn't go anywhere, right? This is it. If I absolutely, for some reason, need to get this off in a hurry with the duct tape, you should be able to pretty easily like just pop it off. Um, and if you need to really like, these will be harder to, to strip and, and get off. Um, but be able to pull over your head, get out and off. I got duct tape, stick it to my shirt. Um, but again, let's go through this and just kind of talk about the pieces. I had a huge dome, so that doesn't help me in that. So again, I would do the same with the front and the back with the tiles. Put the tiles on both sides, right? Front, tiles, hard cover book, not soft, hard cover book. What are we doing here? Back side, hard cover book tiles. 
Now you're duct taping these all together in section. So if this tile breaks, the integrity of the other tiles is still good, right? If this tile breaks, its integrity decreases severely, but will still be able to protect you from sub-lethal or non-lethal rounds um, as it goes in. So we've got our, what do we got? Seven minutes, perfect, awesome. So we've got our two different things that we made today that we're talking about, right? So I'm gonna put that right there. So we made gas mask and protective body armor for sub-lethal or non-lethal rounds for protesting, right? Um, my expertise comes in stuff like this, in um, working with self-defense and how to keep people safe. And my goal, ultimate goal with this is, how can I be an ally to the protesters when I'm not living in a major city or going in places where it's um, um, less violence is happening, right? I want, I want to keep my friends, I want to keep uh, all of the allies. I want to keep um, just people safe. You know, like I want I want everyone's First Amendment right to be able to have free speech and to protest, uh, not be infringed upon, but also that if something bad were to happen, which we can again, we can only control what we do. We can't control what somebody else does. That this may keep you safe. You know, you might have no idea, you'd be totally fine, would be like, oh, yeah, we're, we're good. Nobody's, you know, I'm having a, a safe protest, everything's good, nothing happens, perfect, awesome. You take this home, you throw it away, or you, you know, you can do whatever you want with it, right? Um, you can just uh, disassemble it, and you've still got your tiles, and you've still got your book, and you can read it. Um, you can toss the gas mask, you don't need it. Um, you could use it as like a scoop in the yard for dirt and you can I don't know you can do something else with it you can repurpose it um but again ultimately what we're doing is racism isn't new protesting isn't new this isn't something that's like oh this happened this last week and now we're gonna jump on the train and um try and you know be cool about it or whatever um I feel as though it's my duty as a white heterosexual privileged individual um Granted, not rich, didn't grow up rich, didn't do anything like that, but that doesn't mean I still haven't had a lot of opportunity and a lot of things that happened in my life because I look the way I do that people are like, oh, this is, let them off with this, or go do that, you're fine, or, or feeling safe to go out and do things that maybe aren't necessarily like the smartest things, right? Um, so... I've never had to live with the fear of running at night or live with the fear of being hated or treated less than because of my skin color. It's something I've never had to dealt, deal with um, that I don't understand because I can't understand it because I haven't been in that situation. Um, I want to be here as an ally and an advocate for my friends for anybody I don't know, because it's not about me, it's about us as a society, and it's about people being, having their rights stripped away and becoming disenfranchised with the process that we can't, or with the idea that we can't have a good community in a world because there are some assholes out there that are ruining it. Um, and not just some, there's a lot. There's a lot of people I don't even understand. Even me looking back to where I was 10 years ago, not understanding things that I personally was doing, even though I have had a lot of diverse friendships, um, still because I didn't fully understand at 20 what institutional racism was or white privilege was or what the abilities and things that I got that I didn't know um, I had, um, I've grown and I've learned because I've tried to open up my ears and open up my eyes and listen to people that have been there and listen to people that ha understand. So this is my way, I think, of trying to give back as much as I can actively. Um, there's a link again on here, I pinned it. It's a Google Doc, has a lot of information on white fragility, information on how to be a better ally and advocate for the Black Lives Matter movement and just to be not a dick and learn how to not be racist. Um, it's compiled from a lot of different groups. I've only got 20 seconds left before it cuts me off. I wanna say thank you again for joining us. Next week, Darnell Mitchell's gonna be on. We're gonna delve deeper into the LGBTQIA Pride Month, and we're gonna talk about um, uh, the Black Lives Matter movement and how to be an ally. Peace, thank you so much.